like a seed underground We're not sure what we found Like a smile from a friend There's so much between what's said How we live, how we love How the stars burn above Like a song you haven't written yet It's a story being told And welcome to First Christian Church of Burbank, a community of God's love and hospitality. No matter what's happened this past week or what brings you to this service, know that you are welcome here and we believe God deeply loves you. A few words about this morning before we move deeper into worship. First of all, Nellie is ill this morning, so won't be with our children, but Misan is available for both our children and youth this morning. Also, in a few moments, we will be sharing the prayers of this congregation. There are green prayer cards near the entryway. There's also Facebook Live. Share those prayers there or find one of us after worship, and we'll make sure to hold your prayers in love and mystery. Also, if you are joining us on Facebook Live, let us know where you're joining us from, whether it's here in the sanctuary or somewhere around the world. It reminds us that in this virtual world, we remain connected by God's love. Also, we will be breaking bread later in the service, and this is a table of hospitality and welcome. So however you celebrate communion or whatever it means to you, know that you are welcome there. And this is an opportune time for those who are joining us virtually to grab those communion elements that are meaningful to you. Finally, there are candles here and in the middle of the sanctuary. If you find that a meaningful way to express prayer, please light those candles during the time of song, communion, or following worship. Finally, we return to that basic notion of hospitality and God's love. 
In that spirit, let us stand as we are able and join together in song. If I had a hammer, yeah, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, all over this land. I would hammer out danger, well, I would hammer out a warning, well, I would hammer out a love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. If I had a bell, I'd ring it in the morning, I'd ring it in the evening, all over this land. Well, I would ring out a danger, well, I would ring out a warning, well, I would ring out a love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. If I had a song, I'd sing it in the morning, I'd sing it in the evening, all over this land. Well, I would sing out a danger, well, I would sing out a warning, well, I would sing out love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. got this song to sing all over this land it's the hammer of justice well, it's the bell of freedom it's a song about love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land well, it's the hammer of justice well, it's the bell of freedom it's a song about love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land, all over this land, all over this land. Oh 
strange it dishonors those who go before us so lift me up to the light of change give a mighty oak to hold my confusion give me a desert to hold my fears give me sunset to hold my wonder give me an ocean to hold my fears for I am open and I am willing for to be hopeless it would seem so strange it dishonors those who go before so lift me up to the light of change, for I am open and I am willing, for to be hopeless would seem so strange. It dishonors those who go before us, so lift me up to the light of change. Please be seated. And now we enter this time of prayer, giving thanks for music, for community, and this space. In a few moments, I will share the prayers from this congregation. I will then use the phrase, God, in your mercy. I invite you to respond with the phrase, hear our prayer. But as we begin, I invite you to join me in a simple meditative exercise. Let us begin by breathing in deeply God's gift of peace. Let us breathe in and breathe out. Let us continue by breathing in God's gift of hope. Breathing in, breathing out. Finally, let us breathe in God's gift of love. Breathing in, breathing out. We continue by giving thanks for this community of faith and our collaborators in ministry and community. In particular, we give thanks for Burbank Temporary Aid Center and the 14 volunteers who came here yesterday to pack lunches. For Homemade Thursdays, Home Again LA, Project Mercy, LA Voice, Green Chalice, Burbank Pride, Week of Compassion, and so many other organizations. God, <clears throat> God in your mercy. We also continue to pray for Sandy Everett, one of our virtual members who was hospitalized for over a week, but she is at home now and give thank, gives thanks for her church community and our prayers. But let us continue to pray for Sandy. God, in your mercy. We also have a special prayer request today from Timothy Northrup. He found out uh, Friday that his 25-year-old niece Jordan and a family friend died this past week in Orange County. It is a circumstance that has garnered news and attention because of the circumstances of those deaths. Timothy is with his sister and their family down in Orange now, and the good news is, is that they are members of Foothills Christian Church, and so we're under the care of their pastor, and I am in communication with Nathan Hill down there. The circumstances are traumatic to say the least, but we continue to hold Timothy and their entire family in prayer. God, in your mercy. We also have uh, something to celebrate today. Marina's daughter, Nancy, is graduating with her master's in psychology. So we celebrate this day with Nancy, Marina, and their entire family. God, in your mercy. Also have another joy to share this day from Dave Boatman. He reminds us that it's National Cartoonist Day today. It is their day and Dave's day. So let us celebrate. God, in your mercy. We also continue to pray for those in our community who are facing some kind of uncertainty. We continue to pray for Cindy, Brian and Nancy, Janine, Janet, Fran, Diane, Benny, Gina and Forrest, and Pam J. God, in your mercy. We also continue to pray for the members of First Christian Church of Lawton, Oklahoma, who continue to go through a leadership crisis of their own. 
God, in your mercy. We also pray for those around the country who are cleaning up due to extreme flooding or tornadoes and storms that have swept through countless communities. We pray for first responders and the cleanup that will happen in the weeks and even years that follow. God, in your mercy. We also continue to pray for just and lasting peace for communities that face unspeakable violence, such as Palestine, Armenia, Ukraine, Congo, Sudan, and all those struggling with war. God, in your mercy. We pray for those who experience homelessness and those who seek to care for them. God, in your mercy. We pray for those struggling with addiction this day, including Azra's uncle, Anisha, and all those who stand with those struggling with addiction. God, in your mercy. And we're well aware of the hateful rhetoric that continues to plague our world. We pray for those who are most vulnerable to that rhetoric and face violence on a daily basis. God, in your mercy. Let us continue this time of prayer in song. this table everyone is welcome at this table everyone is seen at this table everybody matters no one falls between at this table you can say whatever at this table, you can speak your mind. At this table, everything's forgiven. There's enough for everyone. So come as you are. Remember that the door is always open. There's no place I'd rather be. So come as you are. Remember that the door is always open. Yes, come as you are. The perfect gift that you can bring is your heart. So come, come as you are. At this table, everyone is welcome. At this table, everybody cares. At this table, everybody matters. So come pull up a chair And just come as you are Remember that the door is always open Yes, come as you are The perfect gift that you can bring is your heart so come, come as you are. 
I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. God of resurrection and mystery, we come this day with the realization that the world holds all kinds of things. Reminders of new life and hope, but also reminders that there are shadows in this world. There are realities that cause trauma and grief. We simply ask that in the mystery of this time that you are present with us and among us, that for those seeking a word of hope, they might find it. For those seeking a space of grief, that they are embraced. For those who don't even know what they're looking for, that you might surround them in love. For you have heard our prayers this morning, prayers for things that make us smile and applaud, prayers that take our breaths away, and still prayers for a world that groans due to injustice and violence. We ask that in the mystery of this hour that you simply hold all of those prayers wrapping our lives and for those whom we care in that same hope and mystery. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, the final verses of that Gospel, in fact. So that would be John chapter 21, verses 20 through 25. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So the rumor spread among the brothers and sisters that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. May God bless this reading of the word and the ways in which we will respond to them. Amen. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer again. God of mystery and love, open us this day to the beloved disciple, to your call, and to our own questions. In your name we pray, amen. From time to time, my mind drifts back to Santa Fe, New Mexico, in which I was the Associate Minister of Youth and Discipleship. That means is my mind occasionally drifts back to when I was a youth minister and most of my week was consumed with junior high and high school drama. And at the United Church of Santa Fe, they had a remarkable youth program that was called roughly a coming of age journey to adulthood program in which whoever was the associate minister would work with these youth in terms of developing their spirituality answering their questions and kind of giving them a framework with with which to understand faith, God, Jesus, and community. And one of those tasks by the end was to invite those youth to write what we called their credo or statement of faith. That what they believed at that given time and moment about God, Jesus, the church, and themselves. It was a remarkable program and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed working with youth and their subtleties, their questions, and their drama. But we were sitting in that youth room one Sunday morning, the beautiful mountains of Santa Fe you could see through the windows, where my mind often drifted as I heard about their drama. And we were beginning to work on those statements of faith. And Delaney Covelli, I believe was her name, raised her hand and said, Brandon, 
my friend's church tells them exactly what to believe. Just tell me what to believe. I said, I said Delaney, what, what is it that you're struggling with? Well, I, and she, she got really emotional. She said, but, but they hand them a piece of paper and they have a list of exactly what they should do, not do, and believe about God, Jesus, and themselves. I want that. And then, oh, in my naivete, I said, but Rumi says there are a thousand ways to kneel and kiss the ground. There are a thousand ways to return home, Delaney. And she looked at me and said, what the hell are you talking about, Brandon? <laughs> they were allowed to say just about anything, as you can imagine. And I said, basically, Delaney, we belong to a tradition that deeply believes in the mystery of faith and developing our own curiosity and spirituality. I thought that was a good answer. And she just shrugged and said, OK. And I don't tell you the truth, remember what Delaney wrote, or any of those youth, for that matter. But it is a profound strand in our tradition that when we approach belief, when we approach faith and spirituality, that there is an inherent mystery about it. That in a world that often understands Christianity as strict, dogmatic, and oppressive, it is increasingly important that we lift up this particular strand of our faith, that mystery, curiosity, and gray is OK, and indeed is essential to a maturing and evolving faith. It is OK to say to our children and youth, we want to equip you to figure out what your spirituality is, instead of you simply rehearsing what we believe. That is profound. In a world, as I say, that understands Christianity as ruthlessly dogmatic, strict, and unbending, it is increasingly important that we embrace and resurrect an understanding of mystery and curiosity. And you might be sitting online or in your pews and going, Brandon, where did you get that from the closing chapter of the Gospel of John? Well, this is one of the last stories of the resurrected Jesus. And it is chocked full of mystery. Biblical scholars have debate, been debating these particular verses for almost 2,000 years. And it's one question. Who is the beloved disciple? Who is it? the one that Jesus loves in the Gospel of John, I rest on the fact that it is a mystery. We don't fully know. Augustine insisted that it was John, the son of Zebedee. But as history evolves and as you dig deeper into the Gospel of John, it is shrouded in mystery. One could argue it is John, but most biblical scholars today would say, ah, we're not so certain about that. You really have to dig into the language to begin to understand. Some would argue if you look at the Greek, there's a little hint of romantic language in the beloved disciple. Others would say, no, don't, don't do that. Still others would say it's simply a reflection of the early church and a more metaphorical statement of the beloved that follow in Jesus' footsteps. I'll let you Google who the beloved disciple is. But instead, now I invite us to embrace a sense of mystery and to resurrect the notion that not everything has to be clear, dogmatic, or set in stone. The truth is our sacred text beyond this particular story is infused with mystery and mysticism. I would join with Rumi in saying there are a thousand ways to interpret our sacred text. 
There are a thousand ways to return to the sacred, that which we know as God. There is not one single way of understanding our faith. But there are a thousand voices contained therein, a thousand perspectives to lift up and honor, a thousand stories that can be looked at a thousand different ways. I'm going to throw out another name, Professor Will Gaffney. She's a womanist scholar at Bright Divinity School, one of our disciple-related institutions. She's an African-American woman, Hebrew scholar, that invites this kind of engagement with the text, that if we adhere to one strict interpretation, we drown out the voices of so many individuals and perspectives. She argues that for centuries, we've approached our sacred text with a colonial white perspective and have lifted up that particular interpretive framework to the harm of so many others. It's a limiting way to engage our sacred stories. It's an oppressive way that silences those who beg to be heard. And so part of resurrecting mystery is understanding the multiple interpretive frameworks that we can engage the story with. That indeed, when we read these stories, when we preach them, when we pray them, when we sing them, we must understand that they are surrounded in a great deal of mystery and questions. You bring a whole host of experiences when you read the sacred text. Let's listen to them. You bring with you a life and wealth of information when you discern what a particular text means to you. Let's listen to that. And still younger voices bring different experiences and understandings to the mystery of the text. We must and are called to listen to them. Delaney, there are a thousand ways to kneel and kiss the ground. There are a thousand ways to return home again. Rumi. Again, I invite us in this time and place to consistently resurrect the mystery of our faith. Doubts are okay. Curiosity is good. Coming to the text with deep questions about God, ourselves, and humanity is a mature and just way of engaging our faith and belief. Again, we live in a society and culture that understands Christianity in a very particular and specific way. We as people of faith, through this story, I believe are invited to say mystery is fundamentally good questions are important. Gray areas and tensions are a reality of our faith. Because we exist in a world that has that reality. We exist in a world where there are no easy answers. We exist in a world that constantly creates doubt and our faith must be adaptable in that world. Our children and youth will grow up in a world in which they will need to have multiple answers to multiple realities, a thousand responses to a thousand situations. For our faith to operate in this world, it must be infused with a sense of mystery, curiosity, and awe. Who is the beloved disciple? It could be John. 
It could be a historical figure. It could be Mary. It could be so many other individuals. Today, I'm okay with that mystery. I'm okay not knowing the answer to that question. I hope you too can trust the mystery and curiosity of our faith and speak about that in a world that needs to hear mystery, curiosity, awe, and questions. Thanks be to God for the mystery of your faith. Thanks be to God for you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I think I can say we all love a good mystery and solving a good mystery. That's why we stay up way too late watching one of those true crime docs or we read that one novel, you know, at midnight. It's like one more chapter. Just got to get through one more and then it's 4 a.m. And it's like that was a lot of one more chapters. <laughs> but what if you were presented with a mystery that is unsolvable? or you can't solve it. Today's passage feels like Peter was given a mystery that he nor the other disciples could solve. The mysterious fate of that beloved disciple and who that disciple is. And I feel like we encounter similar mysteries in our lives that are unsolvable or just lack answers in general. And while we may not ever find all the answers, we are given an answer in some kind in the passage just before that in John 21. Jesus calls Peter to feed his sheep, to be a shepherd in a way. There's a lot of things about our faith that remain a mystery to me. And one thing that has been remain, remained clear for me is the example that Jesus set. I find an answer in that. Jesus embraces what it means to love fully and unconditionally and asks us to do the same for our community. With that in mind, we welcome our community to this table. No matter where you are in your life or your spiritual journey, no matter what questions or mysteries you face, know that all are welcome here. This meal is understood in different ways and through different belief systems. You're welcome to participate regardless of what you believe about the bread, the cup, and God's presence. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. 예수께서 잡히시던 날 밤에 빵을 들어 감사를 드리시고 떼어 제자들에게 주시며 말씀하셨습니다. This bread is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 이와 같은 방법으로 잔을 들어 말씀하셨습니다. This cup is the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. You are invited to take this all-in-one communion cup or come forward to receive the bread and cup. We also have gluten-free option. If you are joining us virtually, please prepare the communion elements as you feel moved. my face 
face to the rising sun. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together. face to the rising sun oh lord have mercy on me break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Please join me in God's prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. My, the kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine and the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. There are a few ways to support our community through financially and volunteering. Uh, you can support financially uh, through electronic giving. The, in the offering plates or mailing in a good old-fashioned check. Every week we have opportunities for study, reflection, and community engagement. Nearly every Wednesday is our, we have a weekly study group. Readings are available through the weekly email and website. The, we have also a neighborhood working group. The, the group meets uh, at church every Thursday at 10 a.m. Thursday, Thursday evenings is an opportunity to check from people around the United States, share stories, and ask thoughtful questions. And we have a home at Thursday, uh, Thursdays a group that connects with unhoused and provide uh, Warm meals uh, group meets on Thursdays using our kitchen, and we need volunteers for the packing the food at 12:30 and and or at 2 p.m. to deliver the food to the encampments. Uh, our our monthly ministers include Burbank Temporary Aid Center uh, lunch packing on the first Saturday of the month. Our Queer Fellowship Club meets on second Sunday, and uh, Holistic Hikers is coming on May 8. The group will meet up at 9 a.m. in the church parking lot. Did I cover everything? You, yes, just about. <laughs> I have a few other notes. Good job, Amalia. <laughs> Lots of information in, that Amalia shared. As I say every week, there's a weekly email with more information, and I will add that we have three new members to our walking group on Thursdays, which lowered our average age significantly, so thanks to Andy and the twins. But it's another reason to join us Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. I have a few other announcements. One is the board meeting is this Tuesday. Um, if you want more information or the link to attend virtually, reach out to me. If you find board meetings interesting, ours uh, will, will not disappoint. So uh, feel free to join us for that. 
Also, uh, we are always looking for coffee and conversation volunteers. The sign-up sheet is out in the entryway. Sarah, Todd, and Caden are hosting this Sunday, so stick around for some good food and good conversation. And then finally, uh, this is our week to help with Home Again LA. It has changed a bit. Dave and Sandy will be available in the Narthex to sign up volunteers and answer any questions you might have about Home Again LA. Finally, um, all of these announcements are available in our weekly email. If you have questions about anything that happened this morning, the language we use, or some of our practices, stick around and ask us after worship. Now, in that spirit of curiosity, let us stand as we are able and join together in song. One million reasons why you shouldn't even try. After all, you're just one heart, a single candle in the dark. And there are shadows here feeding on your fears that you don't have what it takes. Who are you to make a change? But oh, 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 oh don't underestimate the God you follow. shining still every person saved by grace has a purpose has a place inside the bigger plan we might not understand if we just keep walking on we will see that kingdom come and oh, 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 oh don't underestimate the god you follow whatever you do just don't God, go out in the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Honor all creation. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of that Spirit be with each and every one of us. Let us go in peace. Amen. Amen.